Welcome to today's fantastic Roots Magic webinar. My name is Michael Booth. I am Vice President of Roots Magic and one of its developers. And also with us this evening is the Roots Magician himself, Bruce Busby. And Bruce, of course, is the President of Roots Magic and its author. Now, Roots Magic 6 is the newest version of our award-winning genealogy and family tree software, which makes family history easy. And tonight, we'll look at one of our coolest, and for me, most commonly used new features, Find Everywhere. We'll learn how, with a single search, you can now find every record in your file containing the text you want. Quickly find people, families, notes, sources, places, to-do items, research logs, and more. Then edit those found records directly from the search results. And with that introduction, I'll turn the time over to Bruce. Hey, thanks for joining us. This particular webinar is actually going to be relatively short. Uh, partly because this is a very easy feature to use and therefore it's a pretty easy feature to demonstrate. One of the things that we noticed is in the past we've always had a very powerful search capability. So for example, uh, you would come up to the little magnifying glass on the toolbar and it would bring up a list of the people in your file and you could either just start typing their name or you could click on find and find people based on various criteria. So you could find people whose birth date equals this or whose birth place contains that, things like that. The thing is, the results were always people. In other words, you're always finding people. And what we realized is there was a need to be able to find other types of records. Um, we're not always looking for people. The majority of the time we are, and that's why we have that feature in there. But a lot of times we're looking for sources or notes or um, family or research log items or to-do items or media captions. We're looking for these different types of records be besides just people. And so with that, we added a new feature in version 6 called Find Everywhere. And if you go to your search menu and click on that, you'll find the Find Everywhere feature right here. And if you click on that, that will bring up the Find Everywhere. Now, before we go any farther here, before I actually demonstrate this, one of the things I found is that I actually like this feature so much that I wanted it up on the toolbar. Okay, I, I don't like to have to go to search and then find everywhere each time that I wanted to use it. So I'm going to show you how to customize your toolbar to add the Find Everywhere button onto that toolbar. Now, you can use this, what I'm going to show you, to add different kinds of buttons besides the Find Everywhere button. I'm going to, so I'm going to give you a little, kind of a little mini lesson on how to customize your toolbar. So what you're going to do is you're going to point anywhere on your toolbar, and then you're going to click the right mouse button. Okay, that's the button that you normally don't click, but, <coughs> but you're going to right click and you're going to select the Customize menu. Now, when you select the Customize menu, there's a number of options you have available here, and we're not going to talk about all of them. This first one, you can actually create new toolbars. I'm not going to bother with that. You can experiment with it if you want. But you can create new tool, toolbars that take up that extra room on the side, or you can run a toolbar down the side or across the bottom and add buttons. You know, you can, you can mess around to your heart's content with that um, just by clicking New, and then you can delete them if you don't want them. But what I want is this Commands button. When I click the Commands button, it's going to give me some categories. And these categories basically match the main menu up here. File, Edit, Lists, Add. You're going to see File, Edit, Lists, Add. So basically what I'm going to do is the command I want is under that search menu. So I'm going to click Search to see the commands that are on that menu. And as I scroll, there's the Find Everywhere command right there. Now any button that's on my list here, I can click. I can just click my right, the regular old, uh, left mouse button and drag it up to my toolbar. So if I click and drag, it's going to let me drag it to the toolbar. And I'm going to put
put put it so that it'll show, go wherever I want. And let's say I want it right to the right of my regular search button, and I let go, and Roots Magic adds that button to my toolbar. Okay. Now, and I can do this with any other things. If I wanted to go to the root person button, I can click and drag that up to there. If I want to put something uh, from one of these other menus, I can do that as well. Now, one of the things that's nice is as long as uh, this screen is open, this customized screen is open, I can rearrange my toolbar buttons all that I want. Let's say that I wanted this find everywhere to be to the left of the regular one. I just click and drag it, and there we are. Let's say I want one of these buttons off of the toolbar. Let's say I decided that I hate merging, and I don't want that merge button on it. Well, I can click on it, drag it off, and let it go, and that will remove the button from my toolbar. Uh, if I wanted to put it back, of course, I could go over here to Tools, I can select it, and I can drag it back up to my toolbar, and I can put it back on. So I can rearrange buttons, I can add buttons, and I can delete buttons in order to uh, move my, uh, to customize my, my toolbar all I want. Like I say, the main thing I wanted to show here was the ability to put that Find Everywhere button up on the toolbar. So you can experiment with that. If you happen to mess something up, you can go in and right click on your toolbar, click on uh, Customize, and then choose to reset your toolbar, and it'll put it back to where it was. So even if you completely mangle your toolbar, you can go back in and fix it. OK, so let's go ahead and jump into the Find Everywhere feature. Um, as I mentioned, what Find Everywhere does is instead of using criteria and stuff, uh, to go search for people that match that, that have events or notes or whatever that match that, and then finding those people. The Find Everywhere simply lets me enter some text, and it's going to find all of the records in my file that have that text. So let's start with a simple one. I'm just going to type in Jane. Okay, I've got Jane in, and I tell it, OK. And Roots Magic comes up, and it's going to give me every record that has the word Jane in it. So the first group is going to be the people. And of course, that's pretty straightforward. Jane is a person's name. So it's finding Jane, whether or not it's the first name, whether it's a middle name or the, or, or the only name. And as I scroll down, you're going to see that it's going to give me those people's names. Now, in this case, every single one of the people, what it was, the place that had the word Jane in it was the name. Now, Roots Magic's not going to look just in the name. It's going to look in facts. It's going to look in notes. It's going to look in all kinds of things. And so um, if I were to click on the event, and see, this is what's great about Find Everywhere, is that it's not just going to find the record, but it's going to let me edit it right from here. So if I find Sarah Jane Davis and decide I want to edit her name, I can just click on the name link, and it's going to take me to her screen and automatically put me in editing her name right here. Okay, I'm going to close this out. Now, since, uh, since this could actually be something other than the name, that's why we have this little edit next to each person's name in the people list, just so that I can go in and just edit that person's that person's edit screen right there. I can just go in and edit that in case this happened to be a, a note. Maybe, maybe it was a birth note that had the word Jane. And we'll give you some examples of some of this in, in, in a little bit. Okay, so I scroll on down, and there's actually a couple of sources. And in this particular source, the source comment has the word Jane in it. And this one also, if I click on comment, it's going to take me right into the source and take me into where I can actually edit that information on that source comment. OK, let's go ahead and hop back out of here. Let's try another one. I'm going to click on this. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to type in one that I know there's a bunch of stuff. I'm going to just type in Smith to kind of show you a bunch of different categories. And if I wanted it to match the case, in other words, if I were to click on Match Case, 
Roots Magic is only going to find records that have Smith spelled all lowercase. Okay, if I don't uh, don't check that, it's going to give me the uh, Smith spelled with uppercase, spelled all uppercase or whatever. So I'm just going to type in Smith, tell it to find it, and you're going to see right here it's going to find all of these Smiths. Now in this case, Smith was a middle name, so it's finding that. As I scroll down, I'm going to show you the example that I was mentioning. Okay, right here it's finding two different names. It's going to find his primary name and an alternate name. Both have Smith in it. And here's an example that I was, like I was talking about. Not only did, is, does his name have the word Smith in it, but also his birth note. So if I were to click on name, like I did before, it's going to bring up and let me edit the name. But if I click on birth note, it's going to bring up the birth note where I can edit it directly. I don't have to go into his edit screen and then into, uh, into the birth event and then into the note. I can edit it right from here. As I scroll down a little bit farther, I'm going to get into uh, other people. And let's scroll. There's a bunch of Smiths. Okay, there's going to be Smithsons. Okay, so it's getting Smithsons as well. Now, it's also finding some sources. Okay, this source, the source name has the word Smith, and the footnote has the word Smith. Okay, now it's going to find these. Um, if I click on name, it's going to allow me to edit the name. And again, the footnote has the word Smith as well. I could edit that right there. And I could do that by going in and clicking on footnote as well right there. So there's more, there's more uh, sources that have the word Smith in there. You can see it highlights the word that you're looking for in red so that you can actually kind of get, uh, see that word in context with, with whatever it's actually in. Go on a little farther, there's citations. Okay, You might have a citation that has the word Smith in it when the source itself doesn't. So for example, here's one where the citation, the research notes, have the word Smith in it. So even though the source did not have the word Smith, it's 1880 U.S. Polk County, Iowa Census, the research notes for this particular citation are going to have you know, the extraction or whatever it is that I took out of there. I could go um, edit that citation, the master source, uh, as well but it's taking me to the page where I can edit that actual information. Okay, let's scroll on a little bit farther. Um, and again, you're going to see here's another one with the citation. Places, okay, it's finding places with the word Smith. Okay, Smithfield, Utah. And it's telling me that the place has, you know, obviously has the word Smith in it. So if I click on place, it's going to pop up and allow me to edit that place including the geocoding, the standardized place name, place notes, place media. If, if the place note happened to have the word Smith in there, you would see that as one of the options. It would say place note, and it would show you the text from the place note, and you would be able to click to go right to that place note to edit it. Place details also. Okay, This place was Paradise, Utah, but the place detail was the Smithfield Cemetery. So I can go in and edit that Smithfield Cemetery place detail as well. And again, if I had the place detail notes, again, it is going to find that as well. Okay, scroll on a little farther, it's going to find to-do items. So if I've got any to-do items, in this case I've got a, 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 a to-do item detail right here that says I need to check this for Howard Smith's birth certificate. And I can jump right in and edit that. I can also go in and edit research log items. So if I go in and, and have something with the research log, okay, it's going to show me that. This is all research related to Howard Smith Jr. Now you'll notice it didn't have any, any uh, research log items, but if I went into here and I, let me go ahead and edit one of the research log items. And I'm going to put find Instead of saying find his, I'm going to say find Howard Smith's birth date. And it's not going to pop up right here. Um, so I've added Smith to it, to one of the items. It's not going to pop up right here. I do have to redo it. But I'm going to go back out, and I'm going to go in, 
and I'm going to search for Smith, come back in, and go down to the research log items. And now, in addition to the general research log items, the goal of one of the items has that. And if I click on that, it's going to take me right to that screen. This was the goal. This is what I was trying to find. It's also going to look in what source did you check, where did you check, what were the results of your search, and so on. Okay. And finally, you're going to see uh, that it, it's also looking in the multimedia. It's going to look in uh, for the caption. It finds a caption here, Howard Smith Sr. Now it happens to be connected to Howard Smith, so that makes sense. It's going to find Howard Smith Sr. But here's one, D.B. Davis. It actually found Smith in the description of her photo. Okay, this is the only known photo of D.B. Davis Smith. Okay, so it's looking in, in captions, descriptions, and so on for the media items as well. Okay, let's go ahead and take a, take a look at a few other things here. Okay, let's say I want to go in and I want to find family search. You know, I could type in family search or I could type in ancestry or, you know, or whatever I want. And it's going to come up and it's going to show me sources. Here are the sources that mention family search. Here are the citations that mention family search. And again, here's the research log that also mentions family search. Okay, if I click on repository, right there is that familysearch.org. So when I'm, whether I'm doing a source or whether I'm adding research log items and saying, this is what I was looking for, for this goal, and here's where I looked, I can find those research log items just as easily, whether I'm looking for the name of a person, whether I'm looking for the name of a source, or whether I'm looking for the name of a repository. You know, what are the results of this search? You know, if I type in, if I type in a place, it's going to find that as well. Okay, in fact, I'll even show you that one right now. If I go in and type in Bloomfield, okay, and tell it okay, okay, it's finding two things. It's finding a source citation, okay, Bloomfield Township, but it's also finding that research log, and this happens to be that same one we've searched for and found under Howard Smith. We found it under Family Search, and we found it under Bloomfield Township. So basically, what I'm able to search for is people by name, whether it's given name, surname, nickname, you know, whatever. I can search. It'll it'll search in places, place details, in notes, and that's notes whether it's attached a person note, an event note, a family note, a place note, um, you know, a, a to-do item note, a source source note, whatever. It also will search uh, research logs and to-do lists and media items and sources and citations. So a little bit of everything there. Okay, let's continue on. Let's do it. Let's do another one. I'm going to come in and I'm going to type in Evergreen. Okay, click OK. And it happens to find there's a place detail. Okay, so I didn't actually have to go look in a particular place. I didn't have to hunt through each city looking for Evergreen Cemetery. If I had an Evergreen Cemetery in two or three different cities, because that is a very common name for cemeteries, it will have found, find each one of them. And again, I can click on the place detail, and I can go edit that place detail right from here. Okay, you can get you can get silly. Let's say you happen to remember that you talked about Disneyland when you were working with somebody. Type in Disneyland, and if you mention Disneyland anywhere, it's going to tell you where that was. Uh, in this case, it's going to say Dr. James Smith. His note said James was there the day Disneyland opened. Now, as I mentioned, if it's a note like this or or an event or whatever. When I click on that, I can edit that note directly. Okay. Now, what I'm doing is I'm editing the general note for Dr. James Smith. But let's say I want, instead, I actually want to look and kind of see the other information about James Smith. That's why we put this edit. That's what I was trying to explain earlier. That's why we put this edit. So if it finds something like a note or whatever, that wouldn't normally bring up his edit screen because it brings up the note edit screen, 
you have the edit there so you can bring up his edit screen and go in and look directly at everything about him. Okay, now, now what I want to do is I want to show you, um, I'm going to do this and I'm going to type in birth certificate. Okay, and then, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this because I want to show a, another feature and that's going to be the and or being able to use multiple uh, multiple criteria. So if I search for birth certificate, it's going to come up and find everywhere that birth certificate as a phrase appears. Okay, so in other words, it's finding it's finding the phrase birth certificate. Now let's say on the other hand, I typed in birth and certificate. Okay, now what that would do, um, in this case, it's going to find additional things. So it's going to find certificate comma birth. Okay, that particular that particular result wasn't found the first time because it wasn't the phrase birth certificate altogether. Okay, so basically the way this works is each one of these fields, the phrase needs to be in there, uh, in, in the particular item it's searching for, the results it's going to find, as is. Okay, so birth certificate, if I type in birth certificate, it's going to need to have the word birth and certificate right there together. If I put in birth and certificate, then birth and certificate, the words can be there in that same item, but they don't have to be together. It could be certificate and then birth, as long as they're both in there somewhere. Okay. Now I can also do uh, something like um, uh, like high school. I'm going to do high school. And you'll see in this case, high school, as a phrase, it's going to find that together and it's going to show me that this person's family note, you're going to notice this is families, that their family note had high school. And I can go in and edit the family's note right from there. Or I can see that there's a place detail that has high school, Avon High School, Avon Polk, Iowa, United States. Now, of course, if I just type school, it would find those as well. Plus, it might find any other places that had the word school but didn't specifically have high school. Okay, now I realize I'm going kind of quick through these. Like I say, we, that's why we record these, so that you can go in and kind of play them a little bit slower. Let's go ahead and type in Phoebe. We're going to look for that name. And we're going to find Phoebe as a name, but we're also going to find it in a caption. Okay, and this, one, this is one we had found before, but we had found it under Smith. Okay, now if, if for example, I wanted to, um, you know, I, want, I wanted to get a little bit fancier, I can use these. You'll notice they, that I can say this and this, or I can say this or this. So if I were just to say Smith, let's go ahead and just say Smith. And as, as you can see, I'm getting a bunch of Smiths. Okay, there's, there's a zillion Smiths in there, and there's, um, you know, there's, there's a bunch of sources and citations and everything. We showed you that. But yet, let's say I typed in James Smith, all in one field. Okay, I'm getting, I'm getting these. I'm getting Dr. James Smith, James Smith. Actually, this is a bad example because every single one of the Smiths the James comes right before Smith. Um, let me let me use let me use a little different one. I'm going to do William Smith. Okay, when I do William Smith, it's going to give me um, well, it, it's going it's going to give me William. Actually, I take that back. It looks like that didn't use a phrase. Um, we actually 
made that a little bit smarter than I thought. So that phrase, that phrase, when you do enter, when you enter that as a name, we do actually uh, look at each of those, each of those pieces separately. So William Smith will give you like William James Smith. It will catch that. Uh, it's not going to do that on the other fields, but it will do that on the names. Um, or if I put or if I put William Smith, and instead of saying William, if I say William and Smith, that's going to give me the, the ones that have William and Smith in it. If I say, on the other hand, William or Smith, that's going to give me ones that have the word William in it or have the word Smith in it. Okay, and that's going to be a lot of results here. So that's going to give me William Aspinoff because it has William in it. It's going to give me all the Williams even if they don't have Smith because I'm asking for William or Smith. Okay, so there's the William or Smiths. And so you're going to have the Smiths and then you're going to, you know, you're going to have a bunch more sources than you usually would. You're going to have more citations. Um, you're going to have uh, the various Smiths. Okay, now finally, what I wanted to mention is that when you do this, you can see it actually comes up pretty quick. Now, if you have a massive database and it has to search, it can take a little while. You know, if you've got hundreds of thousands of names, um, you know, it can, take, it can take a little while to do the search. But once you've done the search, you do have two options here, which you probably have seen every time I bring this up. If you click on print, Roots Magic will take the results of this search and will just print it out for you. Okay, if you click on save, Roots Magic will actually save this file. It saves it as an HTML file so that you can just open it up in your browser and look at it and it retains all the formatting. Um, when you do the saving, the one thing, you'll see the little, the little hyperlinks here, but clicking on them won't work because at the point you've saved it to a file, it does not know how to go back into Roots Magic and access those records. So the live editing that, that I'm showing you um, is actually only available when it's live here. But you can, when you do save it, you will get the, the formatting such that the words that are highlighted remain highlighted and you get the little, the little separators for each category. Okay, so um, let's go ahead. Okay, we've got a couple of people saying that I, uh, I messed up on, on that, la that one search. I'm going to go into here, and they're saying that I used and in that last example. Uh, the first time I did William and Smith, I never did just William Smith. Okay, let's do that. William Smith. That's probably what I did and why I got that wrong. Okay, there's what I was trying to show you. Okay, uh, good catch. Uh, we got at least three people in the, in the webinar that are paying attention. Okay, when I typed just William Smith in that field, it will only find places where William and Smith are together, James William Smith. In other words, it's not going to find William James Smith. It's not going to find anything where there's something in between it. Okay, what I had done and whatever, what they caught me on was I typed William and Smith. Okay, when I typed William and Smith, that's where I got the James William Smith, but I also got William James Smith and William Oliver Smith. Okay, so apparently I didn't make it as smart as I was claiming that I did. Um, basically, it's going to it's going to be if I type that phrase in the that in one of those fields, that phrase does have to be all together. Um, and if I want to find things separated like this, where William and Smith are not together, I do need to use the two different fields and say William and Smith. So you have the, dip, the, you have the flexibility to do it either way. Uh, you can look for phrases or you can look for uh, different pieces of information within the same record or you can look for different phrases within that same record. Okay, let's see if there's any, any other items in here, any other questions. Um, Let's see. Is there a time? Is there, will there come a time when we can search on dates? Okay. Um, if 
if, if you want to search for dates, currently you do have to do that through the regular search, but we are working on uh, putting in the ability to search for dates within the Find Everywhere. That is a, a good point. Right now, um, when you're searching, it's looking at the places, it's looking at the, the description field, it's looking in the notes, but it isn't looking in the dates, um, partly because we weren't exactly sure of the best way to do that. So that is something that we are working on, uh, allowing you to go ahead and enter when you do this, when you do this, to be able to enter a date and find a, find a date. It's a little bit trickier because a date isn't just straight text. A date it can have um, can have partial dates. It can have a day, month, and year, or it can have just a day and a month, or it can have just a month and a year. So it's a little bit trickier uh, in order to find that. Um, but that is that is something that we are um, are working on. Okay. Um, Another question, web tags. Yes, web tags is another thing that we currently aren't searching for. Um, we will be releasing an update which expands on the Find Everywhere. There's a couple of things, a couple of places where Find Everywhere um, is not searching, as, as I mentioned before, dates. And another one is, um, is, the, is the, web, um, the web tags. And the third one is the correspondence log. And so those and other places that we find that don't get searched by Find Everywhere, um, those are on uh, the drawing board to have Find Everywhere included in that. In addition, um, we, will, we are looking to make an option in, in this Find Everywhere where you will be able to select which fields you want us to search in, okay? Because what will happen is as we search even more and more records, of course, there will be more and more results, and you may want to filter those down. So you may want to say, I'm looking for this text, but only find sources that have this text in it. In other words, I don't want to scroll through people and families and to do items and research logs, or only find research logs. So we're trying to make sure we keep this feature very, very simple, and yet very, very powerful. So those are some features you'll be able to look forward to uh, as, as we uh, release some, some updates in the future. So um, I hope you enjoyed uh, this particular webinar. Like I say, it's kind of, a, kind of a quick one, kind of a simple one, because it's actually a very easy feature to use. Uh, just go in and experiment. Play with it. You don't have to worry about hurting your data. You know, some features merging and stuff, you know, you might, you might want to be more careful when you're using those features. But one like this, where all it's doing is looking for data and displaying it and letting you find it, you, there's no harm at all that you can do to your data using this feature. So it's a great feature to go in and experiment with and play with. And you know, if you find things that you'd like it to be able to, to search for that we don't currently do, you know, let us know. Uh, again, Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again next week.